this episode, I'm very excited to show you how to run analytics using amazing tool called Kibana. Using Kibana, you can run analytics on the data that exists in Elasticsearch. Let me quickly remind you how to transfer the data from PeopleSoft to Elasticsearch so that we can run analytics on this data using Kibana. This is PeopleSoft Search Framework Architecture Diagram. Using this diagram, let's understand how we transferred the data from PeopleSoft to Elasticsearch. Just a quick heads up, I'm not going to get into details. You need to watch my previous episodes to understand the full picture. All right, let's get started. Right here in this tutorial, we started with a very simple PS query. The data that is extracted by this PS query is the data source for Elasticsearch. Once PS query is done, we created a search definition around it and few other configurations. After doing that, we ran the index build process so that process scheduler can fetch the data from PS query and transfer the data to Elasticsearch server. Once we have data in Elasticsearch server, we can run rich analytics and visualizations using Kibana. Since I'm going to show you how to run Kibana analytics in my demo environment, let's pick a search definition that has a good amount of data and verify if the data exists in Elasticsearch server. Now, let me hop on to PeopleSoft application to show you the search definition. I logged into PeopleSoft application and navigated to search definition component. Let's explore the existing search definitions. Most of these are delivered. Of course, the data related to these search definitions would have been transferred to Elasticsearch engine for search purpose. Let's pick AP vouchers. We are going to use this search definition to run analytics. This is the connected query behind this search definition. If you want, view the connected query, run it and see the data it pulls. Now let's verify what data related to this search definition made it to Elastic Search Engine. Good news is we can verify that right within PeopleSoft application. In order to do that, let's navigate to search instance, people tools, search framework, administration, search instance. Let's search for default search instance and click on Elasticsearch Interact. Let's see if we can search any data related to our search category. Our search category is EP underscore AP underscore vouchers and click on Submit. When I click on the Submit button, what is happening behind the scenes is PeopleSoft is requesting Elasticsearch server. Is there any information or data related to this index? And it returned all the results from Elasticsearch server. Clearly there is some data related to this search index and this is the index name. Now is the time to log in into Kibana and run some cool analytics. Let's log into Kibana. To log in into Kibana, you need to know Kibana host name and port number. You will find that in the search instance properties component under Kibana section. Let me copy the host name in a new tab and use the port number 5601. After providing the credentials, I will click on the sign in button. The Kibana homepage is divided into two halves. The upper half is all about loading data into Kibana directly. I'm not going to cover that in this episode. In the lower half of the homepage, you will find different options to configure Kibana. The very first step to create visualization in Kibana is to create index pattern. Creating an index pattern means creating a data source for our visualization. So to create index pattern, click on index patterns. This is where we create data source for our visualization. To create a new index pattern, click on create index pattern. You will find different indices pulled from Elastic Server. You should find these names familiar because these are the names of our search categories. We can create index pattern using multiple indices. For example, if you want to create a data source that is related to all vendor information. When you create an index pattern starting with EP underscore AP underscore vendor, it will pull all the search indices that belongs to vendor. And then you can run analytics on combined sets of data. But for this demonstration, we will create index pattern with one single index. Let's pull AP voucher information. And as you can see, there is only one index. And this is the index pattern we created for all AP vouchers. Click next. One of the powerful features of Kibana is to track data between different date time ranges. We need to select a field from our index pattern so that 
Kibana can use that field value to track the data between different date time ranges. Let's use last modified date field. Remember this field, we are going to talk a lot about it. Click create index pattern. That's it, our index pattern is created. Now let's explore what kind of raw data exists for our index pattern. In order to do that, click on the Kibana icon and then on discover. Let's select our index pattern we just created. As you can see here, it says that there are no results matching your search criteria. Expand your time range. We can expand the time range using the menu on the top right hand corner of the page. What is happening behind the scenes is the system is comparing the data in the index pattern with the last 15 minutes. When I say comparing, it is specifically comparing with the value that is stored in the last modified date time field we provided earlier with the last 15 minutes and generating the results. Now let's expand the criteria to last 100 years. Now we see a lot of data. Here you can see all the data that was pulled for our index pattern from the past 100 years. I know the data looks clumsy here, but we can make it look better. Here you can see a graph and if you hover over the graph, you will see the count, the number of documents that were created for the year 2011. As you can see, there are 509 documents created. If you hover on 2014, there are 478 documents. The reason I say documents is data is stored in the form of JSON documents in Elastic Server, moving away from tables like in PeopleSoft. If you want to see the JSON file, you can click on the caret symbol. There is a hyperlink for JSON format. Click on that and here you see the document that was created for that specific row of data in PeopleSoft. Now let's switch back to tabular format. Now let me reset the data to old format. Now let's make this data look pretty by selecting specific fields. For example, I can select a field and click on add button. Now I will select voucher source voucher style. As I am selecting the fields, you can see on my right hand side, the data is formatted in nice looking tabular format. We will explore one more option to filter the data. That option is using Kibana query language. For example, if you want to pull all the documents with origin online, we can do that by writing a simple query as shown. After clicking on update button, now you just see the results containing origin as online. You can play around with more queries looking at Kibana documentation. Now let's get into fun part, creating visualization. In order to do that, click on visualization icon. And these are the already existing visualizations. Now we are trying to create a new visualization. Click add. Let's start with our traditional pie chart. We will click on pie. Select the index pattern we created. By default, you will see a single pie chart without any slices. And if you hover over the pie chart, you will see the count of documents. The system returned the number of documents or rows from Elastic Server by comparing the last modified date time using the default time frame. In this case, it is 100 years. Let's change the time frame to last four years. And let's click on update. Now, if I hover, the count of documents or rows reduced to 374. Now, let's try to understand different options available here to visualize data. As you can see here, there are two ways we can aggregate data. One way is using matrix aggregation, the other way is bucket aggregation. Let's try to understand these two ways with the help of an example. First, let's try to understand bucket aggregation. Like I discussed a while back, Data in Elastic Server is stored in the form of JSON files. Imagine the JSON files getting inserted into different packets based on the criteria we provide here. Let's explore different criteria available. Under the buckets, select the bucket type split slices because we want to report everything in one single chart. And under aggregation, you will find different option how we can segregate the data into different buckets. For example, in case of date histogram, if you want to combine data related to a specific interval, maybe every 20 days, if you want to combine the value and insert into one specific bucket, we use date histogram. 
or you can use filter aggregation based on a specific criteria for, for example if the amount is greater than 10,000 insert into one bucket if the amount is less than 5,000 insert into another bucket and so on you can also use range for example if field value is 20 to 50 insert into one bucket 60 to 70 insert into another bucket and so on let's talk about one of the most frequently used aggregation that is terms terms means depending on the field we choose all the documents that hit the same term will be inserted into a separate bucket for example if we choose the field voucher style for our aggregation which we will all the documents having the voucher of type regular will be inserted into one bucket all the adjustment vouchers will be inserted into another packet and so on. Let me go ahead and select terms as our aggregation and use the field voucher style. Now documents are segregated into different packets based on the voucher style. Now let's talk about metrics aggregation. Once data is segregated into different packets based on field criteria, next we need to calculate the value of each bucket. For example, it can be sum, it can be count and so on. That is what matrix aggregation is all about. Now let's go ahead and select our option. Let's see what options we got at matrix level even though the default is count. We can select sum, top hit, unique count, etc. Let's keep the count as is. Let me update the time frame to include all the data. Let me change it to 100 years. As you can see, now the pie chart is divided into different slices based on the voucher style. There are only five different types of voucher styles listed here. That is because we specified the size as five. If we change it to seven, it will display seven different voucher types. By the way, the data is sorted in the descending order and based on that order, voucher styles are listed. Let's change the size to 7. Once we do it, now you can see 7 different types of vouchers are listed. If you want to convert the donut chart to real pie chart, all you need to do is navigate to options and check the donut and run it again. Now you can see the real pie chart. Let me go ahead and save the pie chart. In the next episode, we are going to explore other visualizations. Before I end this video, I want to convey my heartful thanks to Shashank Vemana. He did a wonderful job by carrying out step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure Kibana. I really appreciate all the work he do for our community. You can find the direct links for his blog posts in the description below. Feel free to take advantage of them. That's pretty much about it for today guys. For more interesting content, don't forget to visit my channel. I look forward for your feedback. Based on it, I refine myself and try to come up with the content that adds value to your skill set. Through this video, if you learn at least one or two new points, I feel all my effort is well worth it. Hit that subscribe button if you want to follow my videos. Let's stay in touch. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, signing off. Siva Koya, your people's soft partner.